That note you hold, narrowing and rising shaped like New Orleans reflected on the water, and in all ears appropriate falsehood wake, building for some a legendary quarter of balconies, flower baskets and quadrilles, everyone making love and going share. Oh, play that thing. Mute glorious story bills others may license, grouping around their chairs, sporting house girls like circus tigers, priced far above rubies to pretend they're fads, while scholars monkey nod around unnoticed, wrapped up in personnel like old plaid. On me, your voice falls as they say love should, like an enormous yes. My present city is where your speech alone is understood, and greeted as the natural noise of good, scattering long-haired grief and scored pity. Thank you.
fiction fantasy by Sidney Bechet. Uh, for those who don't know Sidney Bechet, he was really one of the first preeminent soprano saxophone players um, to ever sort of play the instrument. But long before he was a soprano saxophone player, he was a famous clarinetist. Um, that is until he went to London, actually, and was walking around London's West End, saw a soprano saxophone in the window and said, I will have one of those, and the rest is history. Uh, the next piece, uh, the poem that I started off with, for the record, was uh, Philip Larkin's For Sidney Bechet, uh, which is a poem, he was a big jazz fan, Philip Larkin, among other things, uh, and he wrote that really, really lovely poem, and I thought I would share it with you all. The next piece we'll be playing is a piece by uh, J.S. or C.P.E. Bach, depending on who you ask. Um, it's a very contentious matter, although with ten children who made it into adulthood, it's had to be likely that at least one would be a chip off the old block and sound a bit like his father. So uh, uh, for all intents and purposes today, we'll be playing J.S. Bach's Flute Sonata in E flat.
uh, those were three tunes from George Gershwin's <coughs> songbook. Um, those are arrangements that um, we made as a duo of arrangements that he made of some of his own songs. You get what's going on here. <laughs> uh, they're really wonderful, and, and we hope to do more of them one day, but those, those were uh, the three we did for tonight. Uh, the year that uh, George Gershwin uh, passed away, uh, another composer was born who in many ways uh, sort of defined a kind of new American sound in some ways. Um, it's so, it, his sound is so ubiquitous that you wouldn't even recognize almost where it came from if you didn't know, and that's the music of Philip Glass, uh, who was a uh, sort of famous composer in his own right, uh, famous for his operas, uh, uh, sort of by the 70s and 80s, uh, but in somewhere in the 80s, I think I want to say 1984 or something like that, uh, he released an album called Glassworks, uh, which really brought in uh, sort of uh, very uh, success among uh, sort of commercial success in a way that many composers didn't have. Uh, and it's just a fantastic album if you've never listened to it. We're going to do, I think, the third piece from it, which is called Facades, which is originally written for some kind of combination of string orchestras and synthesizers and saxophones, uh, and we've reduced it down to our acoustic synthesizer and <laughs> saxophone for today.
are going to play a piece by another living composer, but much younger than Philip Glass. Um, his name is Mikolaj Markusia, and he he's an accordionist from Poland. And actually, this is the the first piece we'll play tonight that is originally written for accordion and saxophone, because as you can imagine, there's not much repertoire, original <laughs> repertoire written for us. So that's why we always try to find new pieces or ask people to write something or, or we arrange them. But well, they arrange them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this piece uh, is well, uh, it's made up of four movements. It's each of uh, the movements is related to an element. There's water, fire, earth, and air. And we are going to play tonight the last one, uh, fire. And uh, probably in the music you can find uh, how he creates this idea of the fire.
Finishing with a very special uh, piece, I think it's the third time we played on this stage because uh, of various things. <laughs> um, but today we will play the uh, three movements of it. So, this is the history of tango written by Astor Piazzolla. Astor Piazzolla was the most famous, or well, one of the most famous Argentinian composers of the last century, and he was uh, the man that completely renewed tango as it was known until until his work. So he means tango with uh, new music, with uh, jazz, with classical music. And um, he wrote this piece inspired by the different uh, ages of tango, the, uh, the history of tango. And its movement is related to a, a year and also to a place where tango was played around uh, that time. So we'll play three movements, Bordel 19, no, 1900, uh, Café 1930 and uh, Nightclub 1960. Thank you very much for coming today. We wanted to thank uh, Russell Arts, to say Josh and uh, and uh, yes, Josh <laughs> <laughs> and Ken. Okay, so of course, Karen. Robin. Thank you so much for here. <laughs> and uh, and all the whole Royal Overseas League. And we hope you enjoyed today today this concert and hope to see you very soon again. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank <laughs> you. 
could they be? Asked the elegy of those who have disappeared. As if there were a zone in which yesterday could be today, still, and yet. Where, I repeat, if, if that underworld that was created in dusty dirt alleyways or in lost villages by those who lived with knives and quarries. They are in the music, in the persistent strumming of the guitar that narrates through a gay milonga the innocent festival of quarries. That outburst, the tango, that devil riff defies the busy year. Made of dust and time, men do not endure as long as the light tune that is simply time. The tango creates a shady and real past that in some way is true, an impossible memory of having died fighting on a corner in the slum.
replies then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, the last poem was a fragment of uh, Tango by Borges. And speaking of tango, Libertango. <laughs>